All right, continuing our conversation about introducing variables, we're going to talk about the levels of measurement in a variable. We break this down into really four different categories. We have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. The interval and ratio are very similar, so I'm going to discuss them together. The first thing is the nominal level of measurement. And this is a level of measurement where your variable is basically you're naming a category. You're answering a yes or no question. You're telling me what's your major. You're telling me what's your gender. You're telling me what's your relationship status, what's your place of birth, what's your religion, um, what's your favorite kind of exercise. Anything where I have to give you a checklist of options in words and you have to answer those, right? That's a nominal. You are naming a category. I'm asking a question. You are naming an answer. It's not a numerical answer, okay? It's an m and code later. What is your profession? Um, now, in, in statistics, we do have a way of doing this, right? Because um, I, I can code it into numbers. I can turn words into numbers, and then I can work with them. But for the purposes of surveys, for questionnaires, a nominal variable is something where you're just naming a category. Now, an ordinal level of measurement is one where I can categorize them and rank them, but the, the, the intervals won't necessarily be standardized. For example, first, second, and third place in a competition. If I'm looking at a track meet and looking at the difference between first, second, and third place, there is not any standardization of, I know that the person who came in first place was five seconds faster than the person in second place, who was five seconds faster than the person who's in third place, you know, so on and so forth, or long jump, right? The person who came in first place got six more inches than second place, who got six more inches than third place. It's, it's not standardized. It's not, I can tell you who got first, second, and third. But I can't give you any significance about what those uh, what those categories mean or what the, what that order means. Um, another thing you could look at would be class rank, and this is something that's caused quite a bit of debate in in some college and some graduate school admissions because for a while some schools would do things and some actually still do would do things um, especially for grad school where they would say we want you to be in the top twenty percent of your graduating class or something like that. The issue with some of these class ranks is you might have, you know, these thought the let's imagine a small class of 100 students, right? Graduating class of 100 students. Maybe you have these like top five all star students that, you know, the, the top five, all, their GPAs are all between 3.99 and 3.98. And there's this tiny little fractional difference in what their overall GPA was. But maybe it drops off after that and student number six, their GPA starts at 3.7. And I know it's an extreme example, but the point is for those top five, you have this teeny tiny little fractional difference of less than a hundredth of a point. And then it kind of drops off to become significant after that fifth student. There's not any set measurable difference between student number two and three versus student number seven and eight. So that's an ordinal. I can put it in order. I can rank it, but there's, uh, those are not standardized intervals. Um, a similar one would be language ability. I can rank this, that you are a fluent language speaker versus an intermediate language speaker versus a beginner language speaker. And I can give you a definition by what I mean by each of those on a survey. But that's not necessarily a standardized interval where I can say someone who is fluent knows approximately 3,000 more words than someone who is intermediate who knows approximately 3,000 more words than someone who's a beginner. I just, it, it doesn't work that way. Um, you also see this on scales that do things like very dissatisfied to very satisfied or strongly disagree to strongly agree. As the person who's taking that, I might try to be very systematic in how I'm answering this and create some sort of standardized interval in my own mind that I'm using. But you can't assume that everyone you distribute this questionnaire is and that for everybody, there's going to be the same amount of difference between saying that they are very satisfied versus satisfied or saying they're strongly agree to agree. So that's what we mean when we say an ordinal level of measurement. Uh, birth order is another one. You can compare first and second borns, but maybe in one family, 
firstborn to secondborn was 11 months and in one family firstborn to secondborn was 12 years right or maybe there's a year difference between the first and the second born child and there's a seven year difference between the second born and the third born child so i can put them in order but i can't make any meaningful differentiations between the quantities between those orders if that makes sense why am i not there we go um and then the last ones are the interval ratio and this is where I can say that there are equal intervals between my data points, between my numbers. If I'm comparing a student who got a 96 and a 93 on a quiz, those are the same two points as a student. If I'm comparing a student who got an 86 and an 84 on the quiz, it's still a two point difference. If I'm doing a quiz where each question is worth one point, this means that both of these students missed two quest, you know, two additional questions when compared to their next person. So there's equal intervals between, between data points. I can standardize these numbers. If you take a psychometric inventory, let's say you take a scale measuring anxiety symptoms, right? And each symptom you check off is worth a point and they total the points at the end. I can standardize this. The difference is between somebody who got a 50 and someone who got a 42 are going to be the same in every situation where I'm giving this inventory. Another one is temperature. There is a five degree difference between if it's 80 and 85 degrees versus if it's 60 and 65 degrees. Those are the same five points in terms of actual temperature markers. Your age. If I'm comparing someone who's 40 and versus 39, comparing versus comparing someone who's 30 versus 29, there is a one year age difference between each of those. There is a standardized unit of time that I am putting into place. And then finally, things like height and weight. An inch is an inch, a pound is a pound. These are standardized. Now the difference between, I'm in the way of the text, the difference between interval and ratio is can there be a true zero? Can there be an absolute lack of a value? An interval does not have a true zero, whereas a ratio does. So for example, you can actually get a zero on a quiz. You, you skip it, you don't take it, you didn't do it. You have an absolute zero. You have zero points, you have nothing. It does not exist, nothing, right? Zero, that's ratio. There can be a true zero. If you ask somebody what's the number of children they have, the answer can be zero. I can have a total and complete lack of children. There can be zero children, right? That, that's a ratio. There can actually be a zero point in terms of how many are there. Now, let's say you have a standardized test, but there's not a, a true zero. If someone sits down and puts a bubble on, they, you know, or, or if the test begins scoring some standardized test, the baseline score might be a 10, for example. But there are situations where you will not run into an actual absolute zero total and complete lack of. Um, measuring temperature in Fahrenheit would be an example. Saying that you have got that it's zero degrees outside, we do negative, right? It it can be negative five degrees. So saying zero is not some sort of absolute measurement because I can go into the negatives, so I can't really measure it that way um so that's that would be an example of the difference between interval and ratio is ratio is it can be an actual zero usually when it comes to research methods and when it comes to the statistics we do following this up usually these two get collapsed together for the sake of practicality but theoretically it is important to know that difference so that's it for levels of measurement and the next topic we're going to move on is considerations of validity within your variables